two pure to die. From? Des Moines, uh, Iowa <laughs> and Albany, New York. Yeah. How does it feel to be back in Canada and um, what are some of your impressions of the culture here? Uh, I love playing up here and uh, the kids in the scene like seem very grateful for hardcore bands and like we've always historically done really well up here and um, it's good to be back, yeah, you know, and culturally, um, the, Ontario doesn't seem that much different than the U.S., you know, besides poutine, of course, if I said it right, uh, but up here it starts to get more like European, you know, up in Montreal and obviously Quebec City, but... Not so much of a difference in like the southern Ontario area. See, you, know, but. you guys are from Des Moines, Iowa. Three of us live Three, there. Right. Yep. The town popularized by us, if not. Yes. Um, Heck yeah. What are some of the strengths and the weaknesses of the area, both from a personal standpoint and also from an artist's standpoint? Um, it's it's uh, for, as an artist it's difficult like for at first for people to really like want to listen to you from being from there and stuff you know obviously if you're a new band and your myspace says boston or or la you're gonna have a, people listen more quickly i guess but uh it's good in one way that we're central so we can do just a west coast tour or just an east coast tour as opposed to you know if you're on the east coast you need to lap the whole country if you're on the west coast you need to lap the whole country so um, that's one positive, I guess, you know, but um, there's definitely, I mean, there's a, there's a big metal scene there, but it's not like huge, you know, so, but. Well, would your debut album ever be made available to fans who are interested in, you know, hearing your roots, where you guys came from? Oh, the very first one? Um, it's out of press on like an old label that just like my buddy had, and uh, that label doesn't exist anymore, and um, he still has a master's to it. I, I don't really foresee it ever really coming back into press. So, I mean, if anyone wants it, I'd say your best option is probably just get on the internet and search around and try and download it. Um, at what point do you think would Truskill hire lawyers to sue him for the Masters? <laughs> <laughs> probably not, yeah. you know. It's, it's really, I mean, I was the only one who was on that record and I, I definitely, like, once, um, you know, a few of those guys left the band, you know, um, like they had children and, and got married and stuff, so they couldn't really tour. So I kind of like reformed the band and, and uh, you know, that at first it, like we were kind of just like fucking around, you know. Uh, we were just like kids just writing goofy songs, you know. So I have, the band's it's definitely more serious now. and So I'm fine, I'm definitely fine with leaving it in the past. Some of your favorite Trust Kill albums growing up? Uh on that? Uh, growing up. Probably, I was a huge fan of 18 Visions. I know a lot of the guys in our band yep. are 18, into 18. Uh, Throwdown, Bleeding Through, uh, some of the old Nora stuff, a lot, like pretty much all the bands on there we were. One of my first hardcore bands was uh, Harvest, which was like one of their first releases, and uh, fortunately never got to see them because I was pretty young, but I always listened to them, so, you know, I remember being like 13, 14 and seeing the back of the album being like, let's well, trust kill, you know what I mean? So, it's pretty cool. Um. How does it feel being signed to such a legendary hardcore label? It's cool. It's, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely uh, something to be really proud of. You know, we've, we've all collectively been in the scene for a long time with our own respective bands, and then we all you know, got together. and We've all been working at this really long, so I, I think to be rewarded with such a prestigious label is awesome. Yeah. Truskill emerged at a time when you know, there was some more value in hardcore. There are more values being discussed on hardcore records, as I'm sure you know. You recall at least, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably both of you in the '90s. Um, what values is To Pure to Die, either individually or as a group, still carry on from the hardcore scene? Go ahead. Um, I think just one of the most important ones is having respect for everybody that's at the show. You know, I think uh, everybody over the past few years has kind of lost sight of the fact that it, it's supposed to be one big family, and you know. Hardcore was pretty much a place where everybody could get together when the rest of the world shut them out. And now you go to shows and you're starting to see some of the kids at the shows getting shut out from the show, and that's kind of disappointing, you know. But um, I think having respect for everybody else in the in the scene and everybody at the shows, and I know for me personally, just having a self-respect is always mucho important. Having respect for yourself. Yeah. And uh, you know. As far as like, you know, the first album we had was like super straight edge and everything and we fought for years to keep everyone in the band 
Straight Edge, and we have three members of the band who represent Straight Edge. Me, Paul, and our bass player all represent Straight Edge. We have two touring members who are good buddies of mine. They're fill-ins for a long time. They are in the band now officially. We still play a few old songs. You know, we feel you know we all represent Straight Edge, and um, you know we still play a few old songs. But you know, definitely like you know for fans or whatever. Like you know, someone asked me last night. I heard you know. Rumor is you get drunk all the time, you know, I'm like, whatever, you know, <laughs> like, I remember hearing about dudes in bands that supposedly got drunk all the time that were in straight edge bands, you know, it's not true, I've been straight edge for like nine years and not selling out and, you know, the band might not be writing X the fuck up anymore, but we still like, still have a positive hardcore message and, you know, we're just trying to be a band, you know, the band wouldn't be able to function for real because every dude who could play an instrument who had been straight edge had played in our band at some point. There is nobody left, literally, to be in the band, you know, so that's kind of where we're coming from on that. We've never actually touched touch it in an interview before, you know, and so just figured I'd bring it up because it had pertained to your question, you know, so. That's cool. Speaking of, you know, respect, um, there have been some you know, recent public call-outs by bands like Hope's Fall, I guess this is last year, yeah. bleeding through more recently, yep. throw down to a certain extent, yeah. about Trust Kill Records. Sure. Um, painting the label in a pretty negative light. Right. I'm just wondering, as you know, signees to this this new label of yours, yep. do you have an opinion on these accusations? No. It's not our business. It's not our, you know, we have not had any of those experiences that those bands have had, and we're still, we're proud to be on the label, and we've had nothing but good experiences. Absolutely. You know, um, I'm sure that every band at some point fights with their label, and I think that's every band. And I mean, there's been plenty of bad press on, all, on a lot of other ba labels too in this scene. And um, you know, like we're not in it to make a bunch of money on our records. You know what I mean? So like, you know, it's I, we're not worried about it really. You know, um, those bands had bad experiences, but we haven't had a bad experience. So I mean, we're still proud to be where we're at, and we're not worried about it. Paul, um, you're from Albany. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the bands you grew up, you know, seeing from that area. The ones that are most influential to you. Oh man, uh, definitely Section Eight, Cutthroat. <laughs> uh, you know, well, back in the day, Hatebreed used to trade shows with all those guys. So back before Hatebreed was anything, they'd come to Albany too. And then Cutthroat and Section Eight would would float down to uh, to Connecticut. And uh, you know, you had Fury Five coming through all the time. Candiria always came up from the city. Yeah. Um, so we're definitely really, really lucky in Albany to have so many great shows. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with the QE2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it's no more. But Valentine's is still around. Mm -hmm. But so we still have some good shows at Valentine's. But it's not quite what it used to be. I will say that. Okay. Back in the days, it was amazing. We're probably gonna drop a new album this summer. Yeah, or fall probably, because we're gonna record it in July. So I don't think it'll get out that quick. But okay. fall. A long time coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A long time coming. Um, taking into consideration the drastic member changes yeah. that you've been through, how has the songwriting process changed, and how is the album going to sound, you know, music-wise? Sure. On the confidence one, um, you know, they're pretty much like I was like pretty much did a lot of the writing on it, and I'm still here. You know what I mean? So it still has my take, but now like I feel like the guys who are in the band now like it's definitely more evenly dispersed on like what we're writing or whatever. So. Um, it's not just like me coming up with riffs like you know what I mean and us working off those anymore like our drummer comes up with parts like you know like our drummer's pretty much like he writes a lot of parts actually so it's really cool and um, we've been slaving away like in between every tour we've been living in the practice space sending him demos in New York he's been sending back vocals and so you know got a lot of different influences it still has like a lot of shit off the last one but it's definitely um, gonna dabble around in some different areas and it is down tuned more so it's down a whole step from that album was in drop C now we're in A sharp so you'll notice that difference as well I don't know if you want to say anything I think the the end result is just gonna be a lot more rounded record it's gonna be a lot more mature uh, and like all of us have influences from all over so that's kind of all incorporated in there it picks up where confidence left off but it also puts a taste of all the new the new guys it puts a taste of where we're all coming from too so yeah. it's uh it's a lot bouncier it's just a, it's gonna be a really fun record i think kids are gonna be into it yeah totally breakdowns awesome. are all heavier i mean it's heavier all around you know it is for sure so. any final shout outs quickly before we finish 
shout outs. <laughs> uh, we want to thank you guys for yeah. taking the time to, to come talk to yeah. us and being interested about our band. That means a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>